Welcome to the latest this week's Acker podcast, sponsored by Skybet Acker Freeze. Tom, Jimmy, Jake, and Joe with you as ever to run through the schedule. Coming up on this show, then, we have five teams fancied around 16 to 1. There's plenty of disagreement about the Saturday schedule. And we discuss the Premier League's new managerial sensation. But that's just who could that be? Let's know your thoughts in the comments all through Sport and Live Football social media channels. And remember to keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. This podcast is 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Last week, Saka then, um, I love doing this because I just chucked to you a lot to talk about it. it. A couple of wins, a couple of draws and a defeat. Have I got that right? I can't remember. It seems so long ago. I mean, the Aka didn't win. That's the bottom line. The Aka didn't win. That's basically yeah. the main top line out of this. And it was never going to win because I think Barnsley went 1-0 down early, didn't they? And then 2-0 down by yeah. half time. I want to um, look at people, but Barnsley, your team. No yeah. comment. You'd shame. But yeah, it wouldn't have won anyway, even if Barnsley had won. And then Jim Rod and I did the Route 1-1 one, one on Monday. Draws galore in yeah. that on that Tuesday slate of games. Uh, Sutton, that shout didn't pay off. Uh, they should have made the early chances count, but that's football, guys. Yeah. That's Brian, football. Brian Bennett said, at least you two normally talk sense. We'll see. We did see, Brian. <laughs> yeah, and it was see. absolutely pants. And yeah, it was rubbish. Yeah, some, some brilliant comments on last weekend's Aka. So much positive feedback. <laughs> so much positive yeah. feedback. Tom Keep JB, coming in. one go, put possibly the worst betting advice I have ever seen. Couldn't pick a winning bet if your life depended on it. Jack it in, boys. You're only embarrassing yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're just, this is to announce that um, this will be the last ever podcast, isn't it? Is it? God. Oh, yeah. that's, that's come as news we're to only me. Joking. We just do this because we're bored. Correct. Yeah. Oh, you're going to carry on there. Go on, Jim Rod. <laughs> no, I'll no. Put a couple more before we uh, try and brush it oh, quickly wanna... behind us. No, so, anything else? You know, don't well, have to. Uh, Joel Carrio. Oh, it might be Joe Lacario. <laughs> oh, it might be Joel Cario. Joel Cairo. That's what it is, yeah. I'll read the names. You read the comments. Ooh, he said, stop picking five teams and away teams. Duffman, I'm sure you echo that sentiment. I think that might be think, Duffman. But then... Two, two of the away teams won. <laughs> yeah, he trumped himself uh, midweek. Same man. Andrew. Might as well give the tea lady a go. Two draws and a defeat, for fuck's sake. Mm. <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Move well, on. It's, yeah. it's very, very quickly. It's a fair point because we've, we call them stinkers on the Acker Tracker. We've had four of them now. Yeah. Uh, 16 straight defeats, last Acker to win, do you remember it? Back in mid-November. It's a different world back then. Different wasn't it? time. Different world. So, before COVID? Yeah, it's all <laughs> one big blur, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we need all the help to get uh, that we can get. So I did a little poll just asking the people, help us, please, please. Did we authorise this? Please, oh, no. please, please. Gone, yeah, I'm not happy about this. Well, what actually, I completely missed this, so please tell me more. I actually turned to trolling... You both. Yeah, I did know. Nobody, nobody was... replied um, in midweek. I trolled I... your Twitter account. Weird, I didn't yeah. see it. It was on yeah. YouTube, and I thought that man's got the same Twitter name as Joe. How weird's that? <laughs> yeah, I missed this altogether. Yeah, but I just put the shortest price teams on a poll. Like 200 votes. West Brom were the least fancied, but the most popular was Stockport. They were the other host... two before we go on. Sorry. Uh, uh, How, who, who were the teams you put up? I just have really made a note of that. I think it was West Brom. Stockport, Stockport at Harrogate, Portsmouth. Pompey, Newcastle, and Newcastle at Luton. Yeah, okay, yeah. interesting. Um, um, God, you're, yeah. Stockport then. Yeah, Stockport one to three at Harrogate. Uh, I feel like that's a good place to start. They won their last two. They beat Donny five one last weekend. They are five points clear at the top of Sky Bet League two. Like I say, won their last two, and I think they went on a pretty decent run at some point earlier on in the Just season. But Duffman, I wanted to throw to you because we went against Harrogate on Tuesday and we was burnt. So would you be keen to do it again? Absolutely not at that price. I thought at Sutton were your six to four marker worth a little gamble based on one team's upturn despite another team being really good. Mm, no, Harrogate, uh, Harrogate's form is is sensational at the moment. Is this Sutton sort of upturn, well, by the way, that you're banging on about? They won under Steve one. Morrison yet. Yeah, but you can't just go... Results. <laughs> you well, simpletons. Performa no Performance-wise, you've got to take the context of a team who were bottom of the league or whatever, came up against I Mansfield, think, Barrow and whoever. I think you've got two allies on this. Shall we scrub that one and you bring one? 
We're not getting the... It's not going in, is it? This I don't think it's going in. Harrogate, to be fair, one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six wins in the last eight league games. Yeah. Sensational form, firing themselves towards the playoffs. So, not that price, even though Stockport are top. Go on, Tommy. So, thank you for your interaction. But we've basically just gone, no. <laughs> uh, because we're in such hot form, I think we're the authority on what Backing teams can ourselves. go in. So, when Stockport... And whichever team we bring to the table now lose and Stockport win, we apologise straight away. I was thrown to there and... Oh, what's my strongest fancy? Um, did you mention Peterborough there? Why were Peterborough not in this poll and why not? I'm not sure why they weren't in this poll. Why, why, in this why poll? have we ever looked Peterborough here? This seems a great place to start. We spoke so much about them. They are back at home. They are playing a Wigan side who, again, we spoke about... It. There's a theme with the podcast, isn't there, in certain teams we discussed that Wigan are good at home, struggle a bit away... Peter and Alan beaten in 12 league games. One to two. Nice Aka pick. I can't see how this one is vetoed. Everybody. Yeah, shall, shall I show you how I did my list this week? Please do. Emo- These can't see the Emojis. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the listeners the are on. Listeners or the viewers. Yeah, so I'll describe it. Grimacing emoji is what I've got next to yeah. me. They, can, they can't see that, yeah, by the, the way. Like that. So maybe maybe we can do a little screenshot Always, edit or no, something. Give but... everything away. What is it? That one. In there it is. Yeah. See, I've written yeah. something similar to so, that. So um, the reason why I would be a slightly cold on this is because, yes, we really like Peterborough, but they have just started to wobble a little. So they're edging to wins. Um, so they've just been winning by a goal. I think it's, is it the last four or five wins have all been by a single goal? Draws in there as well. Um, yeah. a def- one defeat maybe. Um did. But they, they've not been, you know, just steamrolling teams like they were earlier in the season. Um, so at the price against a Wigan team who, when we've spoke about them a couple of times on recent podcasts, we actually think that they're okay, you know. They're just gradually improving as the season go on, goes on. So if this was a slightly longer price, it would feel like potentially worth getting on side. But it just feels a bit too short given that those two sets of... Um, that bit of context. That's Unbeaten my... in 12 league games. Yeah. One to two at home. If this was at the DW or whatever it's called nowadays, one to two, no chance. The other way around, it doesn't matter if they're... As long as they're winning the game of football, I couldn't, I couldn't care less if they're winning by a goal, the scrappy 90th minute goal, or they're putting seven past a team. A win. Well, 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 that's not relevant. Well, that ain't true. You could care less because if you'd been to watch a game and you knew a team had been absolute garbage for five games in a row and then you went the next game, you would know. Whereas if you'd been five games in a row and they'd won 5-0, you would obviously feel more confident the sixth time they were going to win. Whereas if you'd been five times and they'd been rubbish and won 1-0 you would feel less confident that we're going to win the sixth time. That is clearly true. Mm. So to what say that it doesn't... What on earth have you just said? Say it doesn't matter. <laughs> what was that? It's not, it's not the truth. Uh, yeah. Um, it's clearly, clearly true. I feel like I've got an ally in Jimmy based on that. You've got a friend in me. Now I'm just trying to work out what I was going to say, to be honest. But what I've gathered is uh, we're going to be very poor on the road, particularly in the league. Yeah. The last win was... October, towards the end of October, only one of their last several games. I'm not going to count them. But <laughs> pretty bad. Can I? Yeah. pretty good. I I'm happy to get them in. Thanks to your Wigan away form, because they have lost six of their 14 away from home, so it's, you know, less than half. But two, they, they've won three times. Two of their wins have come against teams currently in the top six, and they're actually unbeaten in the three matches again, away at teams in the top six, which I think is really interesting. I put, similar to you with a grimace face, I've put trap game, question mark, because... Pete Reading went to Peterborough, recently held them 2-2. Shrewsbury, a team that we really don't rate, they made hard work of that. Shrewsbury went 1-0 up. Peterborough did end up winning, but Wigan are a better team than Shrewsbury. They're a better team than Reading. So I've got a few doubts about this as well. I'm on the fence. So they beat Bolton, was it, that 4-0 surprise, on the 19th of August? 4-0 surprise. They beat Derby on the 5th of August. Yeah. Still, That's a long, long time ago. I'd be, I'd be with Tom Different there about like the about the length of time, but I would be similar. That I'm not saying I I hate Peterborough. I'm saying grimace face that I'm not sure there might be better. Give me a better, better one then. Ones. We need something then we can get straight into. If we're not taking a one to two Peterborough shit hot team that are going to go up this year, 
Then Ooh. where can Ooh. we go? Where, we... where yeah. can we on go? The... Is that on the record? Yeah, it is. They're going to go. Well, I mean, to, to be fair, when we did those daft little TikTok videos, like people are going to win the league, so really, I've got to okay. stick to it. Come on, give me one we can get involved with then. Oh, man, I'm nervous now. I feel very much under pressure. I like Leighton Orient to beat Carlisle. I really wanted one that you yes. I was going to hate, so I could go, no, no. So, I like Leighton Orient to beat Carlisle. I keep it short so somebody else can come in, because I've already spoken a lot. Um, one of the form teams in the division, Carlisle, the opposite. Carlisle are also just selling everybody, um, which is not good. <laughs> That's why I like this at three to four, which I feel is a very nice price, as well as thinking that Leighton Orient will win. What a simplistic way of doing it and I, I like this for full clarity I think on the topic of transfers I think Carlisle are undergoing a bit of a change period I don't know if oh, for clarity we record this Thursday morning it is deadline day so that's the one asterisk that we've got of kind of the deals that may go through may not go through we're speculating on what could happen Owen Moxon is one of those he's going to Portsmouth is that correct at this time huge loss plays every game for Lomar has whenever he's available that's a big one I have this, and again, I'm annoyed that I wanted one to go, uh, no, if you're, if you're not having mine, I don't want yours. Um, <laughs> but they're really good, aren't they? One defeat in the last eight, that being away at Bolton. Yeah. It's just four to six-ish price. That that seems right to me. I, I am on board. I did a bit of digging into this um, from a data perspective, as you will know, Jim Rod. Um, but Leighton Orient, they remind me a little bit of Gillingham in the sense that they're a very fine margin team. So their underlying process doesn't look overly brilliant. Um, but at home, it is positive. They create more than they concede, but only by slight margin. Then a bit more context is required because they've won five of 13, but they've played six of the current top seven at home already. Yeah. So the fact that they have got a positive process despite playing you know, a pretty tough schedule, I definitely see that as, as a huge positive and it makes me trust them. And then the record against the bottom half teams, one, four, drawn two, they generally, you know, better than what what's down there in Carlisle bad travelling team as we've said all year I switch off when data talk happens but I heard Gillingham and I like Gillingham so then instantly that's a positive for me <laughs> any thoughts Jim Rod where am I I did <laughs> no if Jake trusts him I trust him let's get him in and move on are we happy then it's a good place to start good price Sli slightly bit side of me there because my Peterborough one was triumph but we've got one we all like so you know there's a positive out of it the first pick of this week's soccer comes from Skybet League 1 it is Leighton Orient for a home win over Carlisle Jimmy, we haven't heard from you first yet. Chuck a potential second pick on, for us. Buddy. Yeah, back up to the championship. Leicester, 19 to 20 at Stoke. Why on earth are Leicester this big? Why? Why? They went off. I was hoping you were going to answer. Right, well, I am. <laughs> I am. Who is he asking? I don't know. You there. Well, they went off shorter against Cardiff. They won. Shorter against Birmingham. They won. Shorter against Wednesday. They drew. Short against Very QPR, sad. they won shoot against Swansea. All games they won apart from that draw at Sheffield Wednesday. They're on course to break the second tier's point record. Won their last 10 of 13. So again, I ask, why? Why are they this big? I guess there was... Ooh. I'm surprised the word, the word upturn, because I've been bollocked for using that. But under Schumacher, I think they've got a slight bit better but frankly they couldn't get any worse could they let's no. be honest so maybe that's why but it is a daft price on one of the best teams the division's ever going to see when I mean, we were talking about at the start of the year about Stoke mm -hmm. and um, I think that they go off too short big club bias yeah. in the championship despite the fact they're on track on this podcast said uh, they won't go near Stoke games if I remember rightly who was that? Mm. You know, to finish <laughs> that you know, to finish in the bottom half yeah. Yeah. for um, every, every season since they've come back in the championship if they finish the bottom half again, and I think. Eighth the first season. The, so is it then again? Maybe, maybe they, that ups, yeah, they could have, <laughs> They did, because the first season they were back since then, yeah. it's just been, that team should have easily bounced back up on paper anyway. What is he, like five or six games in? Then um, you've got yeah. that like level of like slight uncertainty about there being a new manager, but it feels like he's been there long enough now. And the I just would be on price, like Jimmy says. That just looks way overpriced. Actually can't see it being there by the off. I, I can get on board with this just because Leicester are a much better team than Stoke. And I think it, it enough time has now passed where, for full clarity, I think Stoke's performances have got better. Again, it couldn't really get any worse to what it was before. But, you know, the results haven't followed. And now they're playing a team who are absolutely superb. And yet you're getting near even money on them to win the game. Yeah. So okay, I'm, cool. I'm uh, sign it off. I, I completely agree with everything you've said. The weird thing, though, have we seen this about Leicester? Because we kind of talk picks. Leicester, there's a weird 
atmosphere at the club at the moment. They're, they're again, one of the, the best teams that we've seen in the division in terms of points return. Am I going to get slow off saying? I don't think they're that special, but they're clearly a lot better than everyone else. They're going to get a high amount of points. And yet there's this odd atmosphere at the yeah. club that, you know, Maresk has kind of talked about it recently and the, the kind of the draining, quiet-ish atmosphere. And it's like, you don't want to go on at Leicester fans because it's like, you know, it's not entitlement. But there's no jeopardy to games. So I can kind of understand why there's no atmosphere. When you turn it up expecting to win every week... And maybe it was the same at Turf Moor last season. That it's hard to really get going about a game, and that's probably the biggest credit to Maresca and his team. That people are just expecting to win every week, and with that, your atmosphere is going to go down a bit. Nobody's really criticising it or complaining about it. it. Just it's just a weird situation at the club at the moment, and mm. I don't know. Is there any the kind of jeopardy about that? Does that then spill into the team, or I, I don't really know how. I'd be interested this, to, this to hear from um, from any Leicester supporters because it is a it is a weird one that um, to how important style of football can be for for fans even if you're winning because this is a really small sample size because obviously their games aren't on TV every week. I've never watched them this year and thought they look really good. No, ever, and yet they're going to break all the records for yeah. points unless it falls apart. I've watched them and thought they look really efficient, controlled, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but I'm not thrilled by watching them. And if you're watching that every week, then I don't think it is all about results. If you go in every single week, you actually want to go and have a level of feeling like attached to your team and enjoying it. And if you know that for the rest of the season, well, well we're already up what are we going for now? It's a bit boring, this. Then you can kind of get that. Basically, they're in the FA Cup. They're like, they're, like less than, up. they're like less than 10 wins away now, aren't they? They're so yeah. close to it already. I mean, they're, they're going to have to probably get more points than you'd expect automatically because of how just brilliant the other three teams are that are involved in this, that we don't usually have this level of it. Um, I mean, what I don't know how petty he is, but do you, what if he just went, I'm off. That's it. See you later. Just handed it in. And the most petty move that ever happened. Well, you deal with it then. See how you like it. But it's a weird one. But that was just, I wanted to, didn't he? I kind of wanted to bring it up as it does this then, does the atmosphere spill over into how they perform or what? I don't uh, think it will because they're... They might relish playing away from home. For yeah. Reason. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's what if, I if, it is, if it is, the atmosphere is a bit dead at home. They might yeah. relish being away... You know, they, usually the away fans are the are the louder ones. They make a huge noise, don't they? Every travelling fans. Do you reckon I'll get might, to the point might, where might enjoy that. Maresca doesn't make McCarthy was it? You know when it's getting really bad towards the end of the Ipswich spell. Did they score? Was it in the East Anglia derby or something like that? They scored somewhere, and McCarthy just towards the away fans just goes, "Fuck off!" <laughs> so maybe we'll get a Maresca type one on that. Yeah, they ended up getting rid of him at Ipswich, didn't they? And, yeah. Uh, How did that go? That went well. That went well. <laughs> We're all settled on Leicester, though. I think this seems a, a fairly universal pick, doesn't it? Easy enough, then. The away team. First and hopefully away team <laughs> of well, this week's Saka joining picking away team. later in order to Someone beat Carlisle. Team. We're going to the Skybet Championship. The runaway leaders, Leicester, for an away win at Stoke. One thing we've all got in common is having that one leg of an Acker let us down. From spending your winnings in your head to cursing that last minute equaliser that broke your heart. But it doesn't have to be that way. Acker Freeze from Skybet gives you the power to freeze a winning score early. Even if that team goes on to lose, Skybet will settle it as a winner. It's time to take action. It's time to Acker Freeze and end the game your way. Visit skybet.com for full terms and conditions. Aka freeze time then, the teams that we think are going to win, but you got that little security net of ending the game your way. There you go, nice uh, tagline for you there. Uh, Joe, we'll start with you. Watford to beat Cardiff, love Watford, love Valerian Ishmael. They're just a little bit unpredictable, really? so it wouldn't surprise me if they went 4-0 up and conceded four goals to draw. So um, I'd just... I'd like to have the safety net. I won't say weekly, but there's your fortnightly Ishmael love it. Bam. Mr. Weekend Offender, go. Uh, Salford, 3-1 to one at home to Wrexham. Uh, Wrexham don't travel well. Uh, lost last time out. Salford, big up turning form under Carl Robinson. It's the first home game as well for three matches, and I think the, the home fans will be up for this. 
Yeah, surprising. Didn't see that upturn coming. Jim Rod, look at this cheeky little grin. What's he got for us in this bit? A possession heavy side at the New York Stadium. I'll be taking Rotherham. Akafries against Southampton. And for me, one from League One, I'll go for Burton. Been impressed since the managerial change there. They're at home to Lincoln. I think I'd fancy them to get the job done there. There are Akafries picks. Back to this week's Akafries. The two L's, Leighton Orient and Leicester so far, then the double above two to one. Show people your T-shirt, by the way, in case it's hiding behind the laptop. They're going, right, what the hell's he up to at the weekend? Right, no, yeah, it's, I'm, it's, I've not it's, actually been an offender. It's, it's fashion, everybody. We know about it. Um, you're not kicked off yet, have you? No. For our listeners, can you just give it a little... Oh, God, yeah. We're also description. It's uh, what looks football oh, hooliganism. Hooligans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Diego Maradona, uh, Gaza... Bob Marley, keep doing keepy uppies. Yeah, that kind of thing. And it's um, a weekend defender brand. That, name, that uh, name is sticking, look, isn't look it? Look at Mitt Nothing. Yep. What the hell is this guy planning? The name of the podcast there. That's the name weekend. of this episode. Weekend That's defender. It. Admit nothing. I like it. Oh, admit no, nothing. Or weekend nothing. defender. I was thinking. Weekend defender. <laughs> yeah, weekend defender nothing. works. No, I didn't do it. Uh, yeah, back yeah, to it. Back Who's to joining Leighton Orient and Leicester for um, us? Hull. At home to Millwall, 21 to 20. Um, quite a few reasons I like Hull. They are well rested. They've not played since the 19th of January, so they've had two weeks off. Um, Millwall have played twice since then. The home form has been strong. Um, last eight, they've won five, lost three. All three have been against teams in 11th and above. Obviously, Millwall are right down there at the minute. They beat in Preston, Huddersfield, Rotherham, Cardiff, Blackburn, all teams below that marker. Um, eighth best on underlying process at home, which shows that the good level of performance to back up the results. And Millwall have lost four of last six away, including at Cardiff and QPR, which, as we know, are not very good teams. Mm, those defeats at Cardiff and QPR are pretty damning, to be fair, aren't they? Yeah, the, the one at QPR was poor as well that, last time out. They were really bad in that game. And did you back a centre-half in that game? Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always <laughs> lies, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that price is too big for a playoff chasing team. Hull are going to be a team in the second half of the season, aren't they? Mm. This is the, the start of a, a team who were good anyway, that were always on the radar, Liam Rossini being a big part of that. But then they've got a nice combination now of a head coach who's very clearly talented, an owner who's willing to back them, and crucially, PS rules. There seems to be a lot of buffer zone there for them as well. Yes, There's a lot of ability players, yeah. to attract players in. You look at the quality of low knees they've been able to bring in. Yeah. Fabio Carvalho, Ryan Giles being the latest one as well. It's an exciting project at the moment. And you just think home games particularly, there's going to be a lot of excitement, and rightly so. And you're getting even money on them to Millwall. I was a bit mm, skeptic of, of going against them following their own kind of managerial change. And that for me is gone. Um, even money, was it, for Hull? Yeah. That seems quite tempting. I thought it'd be a bit shorter. Everything Tom just said. Uh, and Fabio Carvalho, especially. Um, Ridiculous sign, isn't it? Yeah, the, the games that they've been on telly since he signed, then um, he's just... He's way, he's way too good for the championship. He was playing in Liverpool's midfield a yeah, year ago was, yeah. as a number eight. And he's gone into a team that's trying to scrap to get in the playoffs in the championship. It's an unbelievable signing. Like I said, really well, we're recording this Thursday morning. There feels like there's one or two just daft signings that they get as well. Mm. And it's like, I, I don't know, under the radar to an extent. But I, what the hell is this pulling power suddenly that they've got that it is probably those combination of factors that we spoke about, but even money. <whistles> price, Jim Rod. You big old price, big old price. Big old price. So is that a yes or a no? Or... Oh, it's a big old price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him in. I like it, and I like Fabio Carvalho. As do we all. Uh, treble there above five to one, if we're going at the moment. So we're on a really nice place. We seem to be nice bit of agreement there. Straightforward on the third section. Happy. Leighton Orient to beat Carlisle. It's Leicester to beat Stoke. And joining them to make up a treble so far above that five to one marker, it's Hull for a home win over Millwall. Would you like a bit of Jeopardy? Love to kick off uh, fourth one. Uh, I'm going to take it back to the National League, which is at the moment is my favourite betting area. This is happy hunting ground. I'll tell you about my bet last weekend. This isn't donuts territory. Oh, um, I had. I what's thought, donuts territory? Donuts Explain territory is a thing the in the office where if you have a winning bet or you brag about your winning bets, you have to bring donuts in for everyone to share the wealth. You know what I mean? Um, I had 
I just went, oh, I'm going to have teams who are outsiders to score a goal in the game where I think they are so Shrewsbury, teams like that. Every single team bar Eastleigh <laughs> were the ones who didn't score. And how many times on this damn podcast have I said, easily can attack, they can't defend to save their lives. He's got hammered 4-0 at Ulti. Completely let it down. And it was like 40-1 to one daft one as well. So. so it was a double whammy for you because Ulti didn't make it into the Acker. Yeah, and... uh, yeah, I was, so, I was just like, oh, no. It's... Awkward glance. I was just there, staring but... at Soccer Saturday go, please say, please, please flash up. Please flash up easily. <laughs> uh, but I'm sticking to the National League. Just a nice anecdote there of uh, that I'm oh, still happy really to bet. Lovely, yeah. bet, on to, bet on the National League because neither side is involved here. Uh, Bromley to beat Hartlepool. Now, Bromley, second best home side in the division. They've had a little bit of a dip, okay, oh, but boy. they're still the second best home side in the division. They're still well in the mix for uh, promotion, uh, whether probably through the playoffs, given that Chesterfield's presence at the top. And they take on a Hartlepool side who have not travelled well, six of the last seven away, against those in the top ten have ended it in defeat. Here's your jeopardy. There's been a managerial change at Hartlepool. No, 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 no. Do you want to know who their manager is? Oh, no. I want to know. I know who it is. Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips. (laughs) Um, He's come in. Uh, uh, have you not seen the video on YouTube? I don't think oh, I've seen that it's, video. It's this like, you've seen the foreign commentator who just sings about goals. I think it might be the same guy who does the Paul Scholes one. And Kevin Phillips scores for Sunderland. And he just starts, uh, I can't remember what the song is, but he's just going, Goldie Kev, Kevin Phillips. <laughs> and he starts singing about it. Kevin Phillips, Kevin Phillips, Kevin Phillips, Kevin Phillips. Watch it back in the I'll office when we get it. upstairs. Yeah, I, get it right, right upstairs. Um, yeah. I think they've won two of three since he took charge, but I think they might have been home games. They did lose to Kidderminster. Phil Brown on the topic of managerial changes. It's absolutely insane. They are sensational under him. They keep winning Fine, every now. single week. They came back from two goals down. What the hell is going game. on with Kidderminster at the moment? But that would be my only, you know, maybe. But then maybe that explains why the price of three to four is there. Maybe it would have been a bit shorter nationally it's a bit weird in terms of those home teams and bigger prices than we expect but i mean are we still going with that it's early enough into the spell that it's going to be a long-term change will be made uh, still playing a team who are really good at home yeah but they're also a team that haven't won in four so you've got a team that's forms potentially dipping a little bit against a team with a managerial change a good feeling around the club maybe in the ascendancy so. do you want to gamble like a game show that's the question i'm asking do you want to gamble though i'd be more interested in kidderminster what price yeah. do you want to gamble i got home to oxford right i got <laughs> oxford city i got kiddy on i got kiddy on my list i was going to ask our national i was going to tell our nationally what, what price respondent i wanted One to ask to him two. about it I get an upturn right, but... I need to ask you about it. I've got it down there. That's so short as a price, like... What emoji am I using there? Question, question mark. Yeah, ask Tom. That's what that one means. The price for me mm. was the big... It just seems a mad, mad short price. It's a big relegation six-pointer as well, isn't it's it? It's a huge game at the bottom. Yeah. It... <laughs> one to two, man, like... One, one I, two for a side, second bottom. Yeah. Go, go, bottom. Go bear in mind that obviously since Phil Brown's come in, it's like, hey, winning, winning, winning. And that's it. But I'd feel that I'd feel that there's a, row, yeah. a bit more uncertainty to this than what I would say on the game that we just spoke about there in Bromley to beat Hartlepool would be my only, only one. I don't know about it. If you want on pure form, contrasting form, there's, it's there. It's all there. Is one to two, though, a mad price on this? And I can't believe how short it was. That's why I was yeah. just like, I'm just... Pff, no chance. So we I just pin the, pin the Bromley one on the basis of the new manager effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. See see what else there is, because it's... Yeah, it's if you want to gamble, that's your question. If you want to gamble. Yeah, the game show side, you they're know. They're not allowed. They're not allowed. Yeah. Mm. Not allowed. Mm. No, they're not allowed. And if we need to, yeah. we need to get, not if we have to get it over the line and we get really <laughs> desperate, then I messaged um, one of my uh, best mates who is a big Sunderland fan when Kevin Phillips got appointed by Hartlepool. And um, obviously, the big thing at Sunderland is hashtag Beal out at the minute, yep. even though they uh, won one game. And he just replied, was shite at South Shields, though. I was going to say he was at South Shields. He's actually so I got a, a pretty poor managerial record. Is the, he's managed to go up the league. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so well done to him. 
Uh, congrats. Really Oust, does he? Kevin. Um, he was constantly linked with the Sunderland job, wasn't he, for about yeah. three years, <laughs> uh, despite having no track record. Yeah, it's... Failing in non-league management. Like, do you know what? Get him to Sunderland. Um, so... If we need to nudge it over the line, maybe we use that. That's always a confident Acker boost. Oh, if we need to nudge it over the line, I suppose we'll go back to it. I still really like it. I like the... Even with a risk, the price is big enough for me to go for it than, say, Kidderminster at one to two. Um, oh, uh, I'll, ch- I'll chuck it to the floor then. Go, go to Jim. You've got a short price up there. Which one do you want? This, this bad boy. No, no, I, I just put that down because I know Joe fancies him. Oh, Terrible segment in this book. Joe, your Premier League pick. Yeah, let's bounce between each other. Oh, Come on. Newcastle to beat Luton. Nah. Nah, that was... Nah, not against chat. gorgeous Rob Edwards. That wasn't it. Internet sensation Rob Edwards. Have we seen this on... No. X.com, Twitter.com, as you always call it. You're not seeing this? No. Rob Edwards is genuinely like an internet sensation. He's gorgeous. The Americans, man. I think, have found Rob Edwards. So what's happened is that I think it might have been TikTok or something. He did a post-match interview... Obviously, he's a good-looking man. And uh, I think like, the Americans have found it gone, who is this man? Like, wow, who is, who is this is man? Yeah, so basically, Luton now are probably the biggest supported side. Much like, you know, your Kansas City Chiefs are tr- with Taylor Swift. Rob Edwards Luton Rob Town have got... R- Rob Edwards is Luton's Taylor Swift. You are Swift. Effectively, we've got here. Me? Mm. Yeah, I don't mind the music. I've got... You are. You're a massive it. Swifty, aren't you? I, don't, I like the music. I wouldn't say I'm like, you know... I wasn't scrambling for tickets when the the oh. Eras tour, I believe, is called. Oh, even as the tour. Uh, we will get back to the Acker shortly, by the way. Just to clarify where we're actually at, we've got Leighton Orient, Leicester and Hull. That's irrelevant because Rob Edwards' time. His uh, interviews have been getting, mil- I mean, like 16 million views on the post-match it's interview insane. that went what, viral. On the, on the Luton on, TikTok? On his Twitter. On Twitter. And like the next one he did... Little grimacing, little face, little grinning little face. Uh, he said that he's been told to stop smiling in these interviews. I don't know who's told him, but someone's not happy with all the attention he's getting. Um, yeah, 16 million, I think the original one got. All the other stuff they're getting is just like, yeah, you know. Did you see Ed- 39k views on some little graphic? Put Rob Edwards in front of the camera, you're going viral. But are we taking Newcastle at full? No, 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 no chance. Got or just Rob Edwards' is Luton's form. Oh, let me talk. Let me say something about Rob Edwards. His Wikipedia <laughs> picture got updated. Did you yeah. see his old one? We'll put it on the. YouTube. Oh, that's awful. To his new one. Yes. Oh, I think mean, it's a crying shame. Better. <laughs> you prefer the 2008 version, yeah. do you? Um, <coughs> should we actually talk Acker like, a fourth? Yeah, let's. Pick? So we've not actually got one yet. To... As much as I'd love to sit here and talk Rob Edwards, I've got a producer go and get on with it. So who do we want? And he's just done it for dramatic effect again there. Um, and it, we need a fourth pick here because we have been hunting on for a little while. How do you feel about Terrible. Stevenage at home to Blackpool at 13 to 10? They hate Blackpool. <laughs> yes, that's good. Stevenage, only, like as a club for only come three up. losses in the last 15 League One games all come away from home against the aforementioned Blackpool, Portsmouth and Barnsley. So three of the top seven. The, the only teams that beat them away. Um, at home, won five, drawn six, lost one. They're the fifth best home team on underlying data. They played against the four of the current top six at home. They've won one, drawn two, lost one. Blackpool, as we've been talking about all season long, their home and away form is polar opposites. Um, yeah, lost six of their 13 away games. That was how bad it was, actually. Yeah, they're quite low down in that table. I feel that price is quite big for a Stevenage team that are in really good form, have been very good at home, and a Blackpool side that are really struggling away. Go on, Jim. You love a bit of Steve Evans chat. Steve-o, Steve-o. Yeah, I said it early on in the season. My only concern with Stevenage was how they would fare in the second half of the season once League One sides have come sort of acclimatised to their rough and ready direct approach. But they're on one heck of an unbeaten run, aren't they? But... Yeah, that would be the only reason I'd be a bit tentative about siding with him in the second half of the season, especially against Blackpool, because they keep, they just keep fucking us over on this show, <laughs> don't they? We back them to win, yeah. they don't. We back them to lose, they win. And I'm sick of it. Yeah, I don't like it. That's the Guinness Walkers there, by the way, at Stevenage. This happened the other day. Just great name. Don't know anything about him, but I will put that <laughs> bit for you there. Um, Blackpool aren't lost in nine minutes in eight games either. I beat up that three note in the reverse year. as well. This year. They are a different Just... animal at home. And to be fair, yeah, they're nearly all home games that I'm looking at. Two away matches. I think away from home, it's but... Stevenage's blip. They had a blip, didn't it? It felt like they yeah. dropped off a yeah. little bit. So... They're over that. 
if we look at that that run of form though for Blackpool, just this this calendar year, they've had two away games, away at Nottingham Forest, where they went two 0 up, played really well, and then Morgan Gibbs White just dragged Forest back into the game to get a replay, and away at Bristol Rovers, which they won. Um, so is it beyond the realms of possibility to think Blackpool are actually just better now, and this away form thing is not necessarily going to be something that carries on into the rest of the season? Do we want to be putting a team in at 13 to 10? I can get my words out. Uh, yeah, I can yeah. see what you mean. Oh, yeah, I mean, you're glossing over defeats to Burton and, and Port Vale away from We're going in the amount of teams that's like here. I'm not, glossing gonna... over, I'm not glossing over it because I'm just using the eight game spell where they haven't lost a match in 90 minutes. Um, it's not glossing over it. It's, it's starting at, during the spell where they haven't lost. Fight, 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 <laughs> fight, fight. <laughs> Yeah. Who's glossing over it? I think we're getting to a point where whatever picks coming in here, mm. people aren't going to be happy <laughs> whatever way we're going. No, I think we've got... We're up, we're up tre- gems, trebles yeah. above 5-1, to one, by the way. So at the moment, Leighton Orient around 4-6, to six, Leicester around evens, as we've said, or 19-20, Hull around evens there. Pricing-wise, I think at the moment, you don't have to worry too much about that for where, where we're going. Um, Good job yeah. you said that because I was really worried then. Well, yeah, terrified. Really about, oh, are we going to get it? Are we going to get the oh. oh. Everyone's fighting. People have been mean online. The act is not won in years. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll kick us off then. I was say, I thought you were going to carry on there. Into an Mansfield, episode. 17 to 20 against Knox County. Simple, simple, simply simple. Simple. Pick. Yeah. Good team, bad team. Mansfield, we've spoke about so damn much. I've had a bit of a blip though. Is that a concern? Yes. Right. <laughs> Massive concern. I don't want them anywhere near the Acker. I mean, uh, no, I'm joking. But um, I thought no, the I game against Wimbledon. Have you seen it? I watched the yeah. highlights. It was absolutely crackers. Quinny got sent off from the bench. <laughs> uh, Jordan Bowery. Uh, I always remember him playing up front. I do as well. He's yeah. been playing him at fullback. Yeah, he right back, isn't he? Num- for him, number nine. Yeah, at right he's back. number nine at right back. Love that. Love that. I love that. I like that, like mate. That. I hate it, actually. I'm dying inside seeing stuff well, like that. Like Calvin, Calvin Phillips, Phillips wearing number 11. It's a crime. Well, he is a striker. He's no. just, he's just been, a, <laughs> been a daft lad like. But that game, it was very much in the balance. Manfield had a stone wall there, I thought. Penalty denied. That's when Quinny got sent off Stephen Quinn. Quinny. <laughs> My <laughs> mate, Quinny. My mate, I know him. <laughs> he's a blade. Um, and then, <laughs> thingy, Wimbledon snatched it. Ronan Curtis at the death. So, and then there's a lot. That wasn't your favourite part about it, though, was it? Oh, Pitch Invader. <laughs> pitch Invader. Obviously, I don't know if he's had a few beers, but he, he, looked, he looked a classy man. We can't possibly condone Honestly. his actions, no, by the way, but really we need to describe him. He looked a really classy man, like well-dressed, like slick hair, quite old, probably say mid-50s, and he's ran on. Quite old? Like, he's, 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 over, the, he's over the hill, basically. Middle aged yeah. Uh, no, but when I say Pitch Invader, you think young lad, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going off the Pitch Invader's uh, reputation, and he's got on in it. He's got this run like he's never done it before, and as he gets to the plays, he's just thrown a little, a little. So gentle, isn't he? Yeah, a little skip in there, and then yeah. held on to him. I'll, uh, and now he's banned for life. <laughs> <laughs> it worth it though. <laughs> but he did make it on the Acker podcast. Mm. Our Notts County well, shit now. Yes, change manager. I mean, yeah. Notts County. Uh, I said this uh, the third week of the season. The third week of the season when well I went done, to Tom. watch Notts County versus Grimsby. They cannot defend, right? <laughs> it's either Notts County or it's Williams. He goes to Swansea. What the fuck was that against Bournemouth, by the way? Torn apart. Yep. You know the words they you used, can't... actually? What? Stodgy. Stodgy? You said they're a bit stodgy, stodgy. in defence. I remember you saying it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I've been thinking like it every time I like... cook dinner. I was thinking, oh, it's a bit stodgy here, what I've made, this and rice. And then oh, no. they, um, mm. they go to Blundell Park. They play Grimsby Town in the reverse fixture. It's a 5-5 draw. Chaos. Before that, 4-2 at Notts, uh, sorry, at Tranmere. Uh, they have lost six and then of their last seven away games, the only one being where they conceded five at Grimsby and drew 5-5 in a game. Frankly, Grimsby should have won based on just the balance and basic errors that they couldn't do in defence. Uh, for me, when we're looking at the fixtures, I'd happily go with Mansfield and Notts County, who in terms of playoffs... Maybe they, turn, friend, they? maybe they turn it around. Maybe they win the playoffs. Who knows at this point? On current showing, you <laughs> can easily see them being the team that are the most vulnerable to drop out with the chase and pat that are coming there. Mm-hmm. Mansfield's price, I think maybe this has been influenced by whole season kind of numbers, stuff like that, and that's where we go to. I'd happily side with Mansfield side who 
side with a Mansfield side who've just been good all season as we spoke about time and time and time and time again and there's a reason for doing so Andre talk about the Stags <laughs> brilliant brilliant side Mansfield they've had a little bit of a wobble but the processes and the performances have still been good so I'm definitely on eight. board with Jim Rod and also Notts County conceded 19 in the last six away games in the league 19 rubbish defensively do we side with Jim Rod on this I think three to four you get a Mansfield what you let me have two picks in. Yeah, yeah. We must when it be, wins we... this week. When it wins this week. We must be fucking struggling you. then. Yes, the uh, <laughs> fourth pick of this week's Acker. We'll have a quick break and then we'll quickly decide on that fifth and final team because we're just under the 10 to 1 mark. We've got Leighton Orient to beat Carlisle. We've got Leicester to beat Stoke. Holt to beat Millwall. And it's Mansfield to beat Notts County. Four teams then. We need a fifth and final selection because we are under the price that we want to usually go for. We have just discussed and dismissed. Has anyone got anything left for me? Please. Now, New Year's resolution for me was when we say, should we should we put a pin in it? How often do we um, forget that we pinned it? And I thought, you know. I've got, what, sp- I've got the spreadsheet here. Yeah. That wall over there is uh, just full of teams. With zero, yeah, yeah. Zero times. The pins gonna... are just stuck there constantly, aren't they, as Jimmy said? You're going to hate me or love me, actually, oh, Tom. You brought Peterborough to the table. And I was just saying, I don't hate it. I just don't want it uh... in as the first pick. I, I personally, unless somebody else has got something better, <laughs> I don't see something as as good as Peterborough to to win at home against Wigan one to two, which I think is a fair price. Um, that's that's on the slate. I can't tell if Tom's angry or happy. Disbelief. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a bit of disbelief in it. And we were chatting um, beforehand about like last week's and some this week. A lot of like the process for me anyway to go through is reasons for not having um, teams in as much as anything. And I think that there's, an, there's enough reasons for Peterborough to, to go in um, above mm. like the other ones on the on the long list. So I'd <laughs> say, sorry, Tom. It's like, just had a night, it. it's like he sat in the corner, a nice hot chockey chock in the middle bad. of winter. Mm. Log fire going. Mm. Making Tom feel bad earlier. Mm. Mm. Not really. No, I was just thinking it's all about just finding that balance with these picks. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it? The balance. Stay the line, Jimmy. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> I mean, in terms of we discussed the slate then, I opened with Peterborough because it just seemed like one to two home team. And this seems to be the rule of any time any of these promotion chasers are at home, you just back them. Do it, seemingly do it with Bolton. Barnsley have been a lot of the time as well. Derby seem to sneak in a little bit, although I don't trust them at all. How's he on the naughty step now? Peterborough just, you know, they may not win. It's, you know, it's football, but... Yeah. <laughs> Seems. <laughs> There's my disclaimer, but it feels like whenever oh, we're building good. accumulators, He's good team, well. good home team, whoever they're playing, I could not care less. You just bat them to win. Yeah, I think I agree. Look, having looked at the slate, this looks like the the one to round off the acker. Jimmy, I'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 About to get up and storm out. Yeah, I, I'm keen to know what that pumps the acker up to. So. Five teams. Yes. Leighton Orient to beat Carlisle. Leicester to beat Stoke. Hull to beat Millwall. Mansfield to beat Notts County. And if we add Peterborough to beat Wigan, you get in a five-fold floating around the 16-1 to one marker. Five teams we fancy. Four good home teams. One, the best team in the league in the championship away, pushing even money. I'm Bit of enthusiasm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that you'd finish your sentence. Yeah, I was, I was expecting someone to go, I like that. Yeah, and we go, okay. It's a bit unusual, but I man. like it. I like it. Rot stops. I like it a lot. Fivefold. Mm. This is definitely winning it. Oh, you said that last week. Oh, I said it every man. week. Every week. Not lose. I said it every week since yeah. November, which is the last time it actually. Oh, this One thing we say yeah. every week, of course, remember, keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. Please gamble responsibly. You know we love you getting in touch. You can read. He thrives on this, Jimmy, in terms of reading the YouTube comments. Get in touch with us through the comments, through Sport and Life Football social media channels. Um, and head over to sportlife.com forward slash football on Friday. You'll be able to find the link to back that accumulator at an enhanced price. And, of course, the plug to please subscribe, uh, like, or follow, rate us, however the technical terms are on iTunes, Spotify, or the chosen podcast provider. We will be back next week. 